So, welcome everybody, all of you who are joining today in this webinar. And of course, we are lucky enough to have the ProGold, you know, the CEO of ProGold, Mr. Damiano Zito. And we have with us Mr. Luca Dal Sasso, who is the technical head of ProGold Italy. And of course, ProGold doesn't need an introduction, though Mr. Damiano will give an introduction of ProGold, but ProGold doesn't require any introduction in terms of alloys in the world. They are the leaders in this world. And of course, we today, you know, as a gem and jewelry export promotion council, of course, we are also a leader in manufacture of jewelry, just like Italy. Italy has done so much, you know, when we talk about the technology or we talk about the designs in jewelry, I think Italy, nobody has an interest. If you do not know Italy, then you are not in jewelry. That is what <laughs> it is. You know? So it is a thanks to the people of that country, you know, because they, in Italy, what I understand the jewelry is a household trade in some parts of Italy, like the cluster, what there, they only started that cluster based manufacturing. And so it is all family run businesses. Now they have grown very big, but it all started there. Still now a lot of family run businesses are there. So in that family, how technology they have technologically they have changed this jewelry manufacturing is absolutely a story in its own line. I do not know whether that story has been captured anywhere. Uh, I would ask after this to Mr. Zito about this. But all of you today are here to hear the story of alloys. Alloys, of course, as you all know, that for jewelry, the alloys are absolutely essential. We cannot do the color, you know, the luster, the hardness, all these things, if you know that. So you play around with jewelry and the design. So if a design, design is the most important of how a consumer will buy a jewelry, to reach to the design, that means the paper design to reach to its logical end, you require the alloy. That is what I understand, though I am not a jeweler. So I'll just give a brief introduction, though Mr. Damiano is a very shy person, he doesn't require any introduction, but he, in the jewelry world, he doesn't require, but still, of course, I'll be introducing him. Mr. Damiano Zito has a long experience of 32 years with alloys and has a long metrological background. And Mr. Zito completed his master's in business administration from Cuyua uh, Business School in Italy. He, he works with a 360 degree approach and uh, provides complete technical solutions to the industry. That is a big thing, that complete technical solution to the industry. And that is coming from the land of technology and jewelry from Italy. Of course, we'll go through the seminar, or sorry, the webinar, and we'll all know how it will be there. So I will, without, you know, because all of you have come to hear Damiano, and we, we should also hear him with rapt attention and understand that how the alloy can transform our journey in the jewelry manufacturing. So I. Uh, request and I'll hand over to Mr. Damiano to take take over and uh, carry us through the entire session. Thank you, Mr. Damiano. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Mr. Ray. Uh, it is our pleasure to be here with all of you. So good afternoon or good evening in India. Good afternoon for, for Italy. Um, let me say that it is an honor uh, to have a chance to try to explain uh, uh, the passion we have for our job and the product that many, many companies worldwide are trusting ProGold through uh, the essence of our, you know, the, the materialization of our passion. Uh, a few words about ProGold. Um, then many, many of you know the company, but I would like to uh, start talking about why we do exist. I mean, the reason why the, the day number zero, we decided to, to, to do this job. And uh, always uh, it was uh, uh, the, the vision that we had, the dream that we had was to become very important and having, um, how to say, uh, being a very authoritative in terms of uh, uh, in the material the logical field of precious metals. We were thinking that giving this kind of uh, message to the, to the field, it was a way to uh, bring our customers, let's say our partner, to a journey of improving uh, their production process, not through our service and using our products. Uh, ProGold today is a company that 
is employing a bit more than 100 people worldwide. Uh, still, we are working in a niche market. Um, the, the main, um, let's say, activity or uh, the, the key uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in the value proposition is that we are very much oriented in R&D activities. We believe that R&D is essential in our business model. And after the, the R&D, the technical consultancy is very essential. We do not want to sell a product. We want to really cooperate with our clients in order to understand their process and understand which is the alloy that is perfect for them to achieve their objectives. Uh, the mission of today and the aim of today is to try to explain in a, in a very simple way which are the, you know, what is in the back of one alloy and why and how an alloy is able to... Uh, someone is writing that the, my voice is very low. You confirm? Do you, Luca, do you it's hear me well? well? It's I clear? hear you. Okay. Yes, yes. Ah, okay. Nice, nice really and loud. Yes. So the aim of today uh, exactly will be to, to, to try to, you know, to have a, a, a short journey with you and making you understanding um, uh, how in the back uh, uh, the alloy is going to uh, helping you in your everyday job. Um, this, the decision to have our uh, fantastic colleague, Luca Dal Sasso, which is um, um, one of the uh, team that we have uh, in, in the technical and, uh, and, and consultancy department. So in order to do not be too much complicated in, in, uh, in, the, in the technical uh, discussion of today, in order to tra translate something that is very complex in the back, in something easy to understand. So why the alloy is in this way and which is the defect that you are able to avoid if the alloy is in this way or it has this composition. So uh, another few things about ProGold. Uh, we we uh, are very much focused on, on alloys. We are on one of, of the few companies that is uh, that has a very clean and clear business model. We do not have many products in, in our line and we are uh, most, um, more than 92% of our uh, yearly turnover is coming from alloy. So let's say if we do not do well our job, in the evening we have no dinner. So uh, that's why we are very much... Uh, um, I would say understanding and uh, and uh, um, and convinced that if we do well our job, if we do explain well wh why our job is important for jewelry manufacturing, then we achieve our goal. So let me introduce uh, Luca, that will bring us to this uh, trip today, and we will interact each other in order to um, in order to try to be as much clear as possible in every single slide of the presentation. So thank you, Luca, and now is your time. I give you the word. Thank you, Damiano, for the presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having uh, a good day and let's start uh, trying to make it better. Uh, so talking about the, really the importance and the impact of this, uh, this component of the, of the master alloys and the alloys in the jewelry manufacturing. Today, uh, I would start by uh, showing you what will be uh, the main topics uh, of, the, of this webinar. So uh, shortly presentation of ProGold that Damiano already did more or less, and um, which, are, which is the impact of the grain refining master alloys and the silicon master alloys, which are two very big, or, or let's say main categories of master alloys because they, uh, they, 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 they are used for the most common production processes. And uh, as also as Damiano already mentioned, which one is the added value that ProGold uh, gives uh, added to 
the final product. So I will start immediately just by uh, mentioning again, uh, the Progo Lab, a laboratory pretty huge, which uh, has a large number of machines, allows us to collect a, a very large number of data and really makes us uh, proud of this because uh, I personally am working in this uh, laboratory and I am surrounded by uh, high skilled technicians and really the aim is every day to try and learn something more and try and learn even uh, even the best result as possible. We're always trying to find criticality and trying to find a way to solve them. So a lot of machinery like the, um, like the SEM analysis, which allows us to have a very, very high zoom, like uh, 30,000 per zoom, and also combined with EDS, it allows us to have a uh, characterization complete so uh, there's the possibility of detecting the presence of trace element for example in very very small defects so this is uh, a very good example of uh, how important it is to have a high uh, high skill technician and with uh, a very very complex and uh, furnished uh, laboratory um, going on so starting talking about uh, the two main categories of master alloys that we will be talking about today. So uh, the first ones will be the grainy fine master alloys, and then we will talk also about the silicon master alloys. So uh, two different kind of master alloys that will help us going through the production process, going with the jewelers through this production process. And the aim of everyone, everyone is the high quality result. The high quality result is the is the win-win solution for both because we were able to to produce and to sell a master alloys which were good, which was a high quality, and the jeweler had his job with the, the right times, with uh, the right procedure, and was able to get his, his final result. Starting so from the grain uh, refiner master alloys. Uh, the first thing we have to, we can talk about, about the, in, on this master alloys is what? The grain fine master alloys allows us to have a very, very fine grain microstructure. So on the left side, you can see uh, standard alloys without grain refiner. And as you can see from the market, the grain is over 1000 micrometers. So the grain is considered very big, very, very high measure. And on the left side, we have a grain refiner master alloys that has um, a size grain about uh, 300, uh, 250, 300 micrometers. So you can see how big the difference is between one and the other. Uh, what does the grain refiner master alloys do in, uh, in particular to help uh, to help uh, the alloy having this uh, finer grain microstructure. Basically, it helps to start the solidification from a larger number of spots. So many spots in which the solidification of the metal begins allows to have a larger quantity of grains. And so a larger quantity of grains in the same area means that they are going to be smaller. So, uh, basically, this uh, this is the little quick explanation explanation of uh, uh, why and how the organic finer master alloys acts uh, in the metal. Uh, okay, going on, we can see. Yeah, we can see a short list uh, of uh, uh, the main advantages of these master alloys because uh, these master alloys are really common use in the plastic deformation working. So uh, with the, uh, an alloy, with the, a fine, finer grain microstructure, we have, have the possibility to have higher de deformation during the cold working. So in less steps, we will have a more, uh, a higher reduction of the thickness. And so it's basically saving time and saving problems because we don't have to um, face many uh, annealing steps during this deformation. 
uh, a, a visible a visible advantage of these master alloys that we will see also later is the the orange peel phenomenon uh, that is really reduced because uh, we will see later that a microstructure with a fine grain will less uh, a smoother surface as we're mentioning and so uh, the the orange peel effect is really reduced we don't have this big difference between uh, the lowest part and the highest part of the surface. Uh, the grade growth uh, control uh, of the of the grain growth during the annealing is uh, fundamental. It's fundamental just to to reduce the orange peel phenomenon. And uh, as we were mentioning before, you can see it also from the from the side of the sheet. And it's visible also uh, only with the eyes, but uh, even with a metallographic attack, you can easily find out the, which which is the difference between uh, a fine grain alloy and a standard alloy. The shin crest porosity re reduction is uh, something we will go on deeper uh, later, and because we will see that there's a completely different. Um, there's a completely different uh, porosity on uh, fine grain alloys, which is uh, less deep and uh, in, a uni in a kind of uniform way on the surface. So easier to remove, easier to remove. We will have less metal uh, to remove to, uh, in order to eliminate the defect. And uh, the last one is the high mechanical resistance. So uh, going on with some images and some uh, uh, more understandable concept. Let's start with uh, having a look at, at the sheet with the with a mic with a fine grain microstructure and with a big grain one. So uh, it's very easy to understand, even as I told you, uh, with eyes without the microscope, that uh, the the microstructure is completely different. And as you can imagine, uh, between these uh, big grains, between the one and the other on the board on the on the border between the one and the other, it, we will have, it, it will be easier for the metal to have defects to show cracks uh, and imagine uh, how many small um, grains are in the upper uh, microstructure. So how hard will it be to find these defects on a fine grain microstructure? In here, we can see the example of a crack as I was telling you, as you can see on the, um, uh, the difference between the, micro, uh, the, the fine grain and, and, uh, and the non-refined uh, master alloys is that when we try and have the same, the same deformation in both alloys, we will see that uh, the one with the, without the grain refiner, we will have the tendency to crack, to crack before and easier uh, if uh, compared to the um, to the fine grain alloy, up just uh, because uh, because of what we said uh, right now. So uh, between one grain and the other, uh, it is uh, easier for the cracks to show. So uh, another important uh, advantage that we have in uh, in this working is that imagine uh, with the, with very thinner pieces. So uh, while we have a very thin piece with a fine grain microstructure, we will have the possibility to, to reach really, really uh, thinner thickness without having the problem we would have with a bigger grain, uh, bigger grain microstructure. Uh, the defect I was also mentioning before is the, the orange peel. And in here we can see an example of a, of a chain with a, with a clear orange peel defect on the surface. But uh, let's have a quick look uh, on, on this image that will explain us better how um, a grain ref a refined alloy help us to reduce it. As you can see, uh, after the punch on the right, uh, there's a huge difference between uh, the upper side of the grain and the lower one. You can see that the surface it's not smooth anymore once deformed. And so imagine how the grains, the smaller grains, can make it really smoother. 
imagine how how less deep would be these uh, these big holes in the uh, in the surface of the of the piece. And this is a, this is possible thanks to the to the control of the grain growth, and uh, yeah, which is a, a really a really great advantage of the fine grain master alloys. Going on, this is an example, a practical example of a difference between a non-refined master alloy and a refined one. So, as you can see, once the piece is deformed, it shows all this defect under the light in here and in the uh, on the on the left side and then in the right one we will have a really really less defect really smoother surface without all the problems we have in the other one so this is what uh, this was the, the the part of the presentation uh, regarding the orange peel damiano if you want to to add something feel free to interrupt me if you want to to I, I will uh, let you interrupt uh, me if you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. I'm useless. You're perfect. So okay. everything <laughs> I wanted to say then is fine. No, no. Okay. Please go, okay. go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I, I would go on with the fire cracking problem that we are uh, that we used to we used to see on 18 carat red gold. So this problem is specific about 8 carat red gold. And in here we have uh, we have a video. Of the of the test we are making on these pieces, these pieces were created on uh, our wax and then uh, casted uh, in a tree, and uh, these pieces are um, built specifically to show uh, the fire cracking on the upper side. So now we see the operator heating it and clamping it. So uh, going on with this procedure, you can see that the ring starts deforming. Okay. As you can see, and if there's a granny final master alloys on this piece, we will see that the, uh, the objects start becoming all, all black, but in the upper side, it will not break. Okay. The other example, oh, excuse me, the other example is here. So, refined master alloys, non refined master alloys. In the right one, we can see that the crack is huge, it's huge. And uh, there's no way, there's no way to escape this test because once you have an alloy which is not uh, refined, uh, it's not good refined. So uh, uh, the microstructure has not uh, the the small size of the grains. This is a defect that in a in a ring like this, which is empty on the on the um, on the hidden part under under the crack. This is a, a geometry that helps. That is is wanted from, from us to show uh, to show the fire cracking. So this thermomechanical stress uh, is uh, a really huge problem in the 18 carat red gold, and you can see it also in the next slide with the zoom. Can you see how big, how huge is this crack? And if you look properly, if you look properly, you can also see the border of the grain in which the, the crack begins. So uh, imagine a large number of small grains and it's very hard to break them because they are really small and the border of them is not so extended. So basically, this is a, a very huge defect, a very common defect in the 18 carat crack gold, which is really, um, and which can really be solved, can really be uh, eliminated with a uh, grain refiner uh, master alloy. Going on, we have uh, another very famous and very common problem on uh, jewelry for jewelry producer, which is the shrinkage porosity. What is the shrink shrinkage porosity? When the metal uh, inside the mold starts to starts to cooling down, so during the cooling phase, is in contact. Uh, with the with the walls of the of the mold and the the metal uh, going from the uh, liquid liquid status to the solid status start, starting starts to uh, to shrinkage a little because it's a it's a features of the metal but when this shrinkage isn't homogeneous on the surface it can be uh, it can be uh, bigger on a precise spot and it's there where we have the uh, 
the deep pores. So uh, the exact spot where the the pore where the shrinkage is bigger. Uh, once we go, we can go on with the next slide and see how is uh, the shrinkage porosity with the microscope view on the left side and on the right side we're going to see how uh, Progold chose uh, has chosen to uh, react to this problem. We started from uh, this metal, so the uh, the upper in the upper side of the of the slide you can see the metal we used as a sample, and uh, the section of it you can see the, the main difference between a, between a traditional alloy in which you have deep pores, so deep pores not uh, not many pores but very deep. The middle one is the one with the, with the silicon alloy, which starts helping but doesn't doesn't really solve the problem. And uh, the last one with the grain refiner helps us, oh, maybe, I, excuse me. And the last one with the grain refiner allows us to have very, a very homogeneous surface. So we, have, we also have a quantity of pores, which, which can be also bigger, but we don't have bigger, we don't have deeper pores. So the quantity of metal we are going to remove from the upper side of the sample will be much less, much less if compared to the traditional alloy, which has less pores, but are more deep. May I add something, Luca? Yeah, sure. Yeah, just it, technically, uh, the grain refiner is not reducing the volume of shrinkage. So the difference between the volume of the alloy in liquid state and the volume of alloy in solid state. So the shrink will be in the range between 3.5 to 7%. This, we have an equipment at Progol to measure the shrinkage during solidification. But what is changing is that if you have many nu nu nucleation points, so many um, um, grain grow, growing starts, you have that volume distributed in many small, uh, in, in more distributed. So if it is, let's say one number, one cubic millimeter in, in absolute value, instead to have three pores where, or four pores of 0 0.25 cubic millimeter each, you have 100 holes of 0 0.001 uh, cubic millimeter. So it means that that holes are less deep. And then when you are going to grinding, you are, it's easy to remove. So, and without spoiling the shape uh, of the, of the jewelry. So the trick is not that there are different shrinkage, but the trick is that the shrinkage, the shrinkage is much more distributed and it stay much more on the external part of the object, so very close to the surface. And a small amount of grinding is able to remove them. Thank you, Luca. Oh, thank you, thank you, Damian. You were even, even clearer than what I, had, what I expected. Thank you very much. So in here, we, we are having a look, a deep look uh, on the pores. So you can see in a, on the left side, the traditional alloy, as Damian just told us, the pores are not much we can see that the pores are just a few, but they are really, uh, really deep. So how much metal, how much precious metal are we going to lose? Are we going to, we must remove from the sample in order to eliminate the defect? This is the real question because on the right side, you can see that the pores are a larger number, like the quantity of pores, but they are less deep they're less deep, so it will be really easier and faster to remove them. <clears throat> Let me say something more because then I saw one question coming already. Uh, of course, when we are talking about shrinkage porosity, we are talking about casting. So uh, the issue that comes from when the metal is filling the flask, when it, it is liquid, and then the it starts the solidification process. And in casting, it's not that all the object is solidifying at the same time. And some part of the, of the, let's say, of a ring, they are solidifying after other part of the same ring. 
And the last one that is solidifying, if it's not, if the ring is not well, uh, the, 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 let's say the, the sprue is not well, of a well dimension, then the string cage instead, instead to go to the sprue uh, or to the gate, then it's going, it's, it stay on the piece. So that's why having a small grain size alloy that, that, that the unwanted effect that sometimes is not possible to avoid because it's not possible to put the proper gate or the proper size of the gate or the shape of the jewel is not allowing you to do this then you have to face with the problem of having some shrinkage on, on the on the piece that you were producing then more spread is the volume of of shrinkage and more uh, probable is the possibility to do not reject that piece Okay, Damiano, thank you. I would ask you if you might, if you don't mind, tell me if there are many questions because maybe if I'm quite focused on the presentation and I'm not, and I'm not. No, no, no but let, let's go. But maybe we were understood yeah, just, just, talking just, about casting, but finally, now, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. is not. Maybe it was not so clear. So the gentleman that like, was like now, if you uh, see something that not be added right. due, due to the question, no problem. No, you can go ahead, please. Okay, so. This was the last part. This was the last slide uh, about the grain refiner master alloys. Now we're talking about the other category that we were mentioning on the previous part of the presentation, which, which are the silicon master alloys. Uh, which are the main advantages of a silicon master alloys? The optimal form, uh, the optimal mold filling capability, the deoxidized cast that will help us also to have brighter stones in uh, stone in cast so in casting with stones we have these brighter stones really and um, we have a drastic reduction of gas porosity so i will start immediately with the, the, the form feeling because uh, it's something that i have also experienced myself with my hands and you can really see the huge difference between uh, these two alloys so the alloy without silicon and the alloy with the silicon starting from a wax model like you see on the left, you can see that uh, the solidification doesn't allow, the, the, the quicker solidification doesn't allow uh, add the alloy without the silicone to fill all the mold, fill the mold. You can see that in the right one, you have just few pieces that didn't manage, didn't manage to fill all the mold. So the silicone enlarging this melting, melting range, how lowing, uh, the silicon, uh, excuse me, the, the solidus, uh, helps helps the alloy to stay more liquid and to fill all this, even this small uh, this small geometry. We prepare this box model properly to to test uh, the form filling, but with the silicon add to the material alloy, we were able to fill almost everything in the in the model. Uh, let me say also. Of course, there is something connected to the, to the wider uh, melting range of the alloy due to the silicon uh, content in the alloy. But all, another thing is that the silicon is somehow is modifying the, the ability of the alloy to lose less energy for every single second. So it means that it lose not one degree per second, 0 0.8 degrees per second. So it, it has more time to fulfill the, the mold. And, and this is also the next, next reason of, uh, of why silicon is helping very much on this, on this matter. Yeah, uh, as you were, as also the man were, uh, was saying, we have this slide instead of the last one, we have a, a real example of uh, uh, the foam filling even with the rings, we prepared properly this ring just to see how this would, would have react to this problem. And uh, on the next slide, we, we are going to see uh, a simulation that we uh, that we prepared some like a couple of weeks ago. And by this simulation, we can see uh, which one is the temperature of the of the metal getting into the getting into the mold into the investment and how the, solidif the solidification goes. So when and where the solidification begins and where it ends before, even before 
feeling all the form like the uh, like the two like two samples in the upper side so <clears throat> difference between uh, the right one and the left one is the is the silicon ad obviously and uh, as the simulation showed us as the simulation showed us the right one was easily able to to fill all the small geometries uh, instead the left one wasn't wasn't had, had not the capability to fill all these uh, small tiny geometries well, even uh, to, to add something about what Luca is saying, uh, the, the, the project in working with a, simu with a simulator uh -huh. is very much helping even the design of new alloys and even understanding uh, the problem that the customer is facing sometimes with some model to try to predict where the porosity is forming, especially shrinkage or having a form filling problem or some... Um, um, uh, what is the name of uh, um, hot tearing? Sorry, and um, and it is possible with with the, with the simulation to predict where to put the the, the sprues, and uh, in order to try to avoid as much problem as possible. So, the the, the case of uh, the two the two trees the, the two trees that we have uh, in, in this slide is exactly uh, simulating two different alloys with the thermodynamic characteristic of every single alloy in under the, the test in which one, one had silicon and the other one had no silicon. So in a simulation, then you can predict what is happening in reality, but then even the simulation is giving exactly the same behavior. Thank you. So. Going on, we will see how uh, how it looks to have a deoxidated cast and oxidated one. So uh, imagine the right one. You can see the huge difference by by your hand. You can see it with your eyes because once you clean your trees after the casting, you see that one will be brighter than the other one, and it's it doesn't need any any kind of uh, lab analysis to to see it because it's really really. You can see it also with your eyes, and uh, this is uh, something that is uh, very, very important while we're uh, casting with the stones. So, with, with the preset stones, we will have the some surfaces that won't be we won't be able to polish. So, as you can see, the different the difference from the left one and the right one, all the metal surfaces in contact with the stones in the internal part, we won't be able to finish them. We won't, we won't be able to polish them and to clean them. So the metal needs to be as bright as possible. The metal needs to be uh, as light as possible in order to make the stone look brighter, to make it shinier. And on the left one, as you can see, the deoxidated pieces gives also another kind of light to the stone because it really looks different because as, uh, once you see it, you see that in the in the in the under that under under the stone, the metal is not as bright as it should be. So it doesn't give the, the proper light to the to the stones. Going on, we have another uh, another very known uh, defect on uh, on jewelry, which is the fire stain. And which is uh, very common because it's a uh, built up or uh, an accumulation of oxide in a large area of, of the piece. But uh, the biggest problem about it, about this defect, is that it's very deep, so it's harder to remove. It's really hard to remove. We have to go to remove a lot of metal, a lot of precious metal, in order to try and eliminate. Uh, this uh, and sometimes is even not possible because it's in case of silver is copper oxide yeah. and then copper is uh, through the cross section of, of, of the ring and then I will say that when once the fire stain fire stains appear then the object need to be rejected or or you try to put a kind of galvanic layer on the top but uh, to, in order to cover, but then the galvanic is not really very well sticking over copper oxide. And uh, so this is very, very 
strictly connected with silicon, of course, with many other uh, factors, but silicon alloy, usually they, they are able to reduce very much uh, this problem. Going on uh, with uh, another great, very known uh, example of defect, we have the, the gas positive example. So as you can see uh, with the right, on the left side, you have uh, the, the, the original piece and on the, oh, excuse me, on the, on the right, you have the original piece and on the left side, you have uh, the, microscopic, uh, the microscopic picture of the, these small holes. These more small holes are um, the bubbles that uh, are the, the problems that are forming during uh, uh, the solidification of the metal. So once uh, the metal starts its uh, solidification phase, the bubbles that uh, the gases that are inside the metal are the, are not able to, to to get stay inside anymore. And so once they try and go out, they form this uh, kind of uh, round bubble. So as you can see, the meteorite is uh, completely different from. Uh, the, the previous images of uh, porosity. So it's uh, from, it, from its rounder shape, uh, you can uh, notice it. In here, we have some other uh, examples and uh, going on, we can see how uh, the silicon add to the alloy helps reducing this defect. So, Basically, as we can see from this, uh, from this graphic, um, the silicon helps to create this, uh, this, this, let's say, this define it as a, can I say, glassy layer, the you know, like when melted. Yeah, it's, a, it's a kind of compound between zinc and silicon. Zinc and silicon. It's uh, making a kind of barrier. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, in looking with my eyes, I, I would have defined it like glassy, but it's not that technical word, but going on. Uh, as you can see, the, sil the silicon added to the alloy, which contains also zinc, creates this, uh, this layer that protects the metal from the out outside gases. So imagine that the metal is not affected anymore from these gases that have, we've seen how much, how many defects have created in the past slides. So, uh, we can see a real example of it because a traditional alloy compared with an alloy with, uh, with the silicon add. Once added to, uh, to the zinc, the silicon creates uh, this, uh, this protection, protective layer, excuse me. And uh, how you can see the huge difference between the the right the right one on the traditional alloy and the right one on the, on the gas alloy. Excuse me, this is my fault. <laughs> the mouse is so sensitive. Uh, yeah, so preventing uh, also the 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 composition of the inv the investment that can release release gases. Silicon is really helping to re to reduce this defect to our. Uh, alloy. So, uh, Damiano, if you want to add uh, something on this oh, for, uh, for gas porosity, you mean, or for this one? Mm, uh, for for this. Uh, oh, that, 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 just finally, that the barrier, that the this layer of uh, that compound between silicon and silicon and zinc and oxygen, of course, uh, is in somehow protecting. Um, the temperature that the investment is reaching when the metal is in contact at its liquid state with the, with the investment is very close to the, the composition temperature of the investment. The composition of the investment means pro gas production and this gas production is in somehow uh, not able to enter to the piece thanks to this layer that has a very high viscosity and is not allowing very much. In fact, every one of you that was using a silicon alloy, you know, very simple to understand if it's silicon or not silicon when it is melted, that the silicon one looks like when you are mixing, if you mix by hand, just when you do a pre-melting or if you are doing just uh, producing the, the, 
the ingot mold to send to refinery because you are using anymore. Then when you are mixing the metal, it looks like a cream. So the viscosity is higher. While if it's not a silicon alloy, uh, then it, it, it looks like water. So that's why even mechanically, when it is liquid inside the flask for any kind of gases is much more difficult to really penetrate the alloy on its external layer in order to give you that kind of gas porosity that is well diffused in, in the entire object, especially in the area where there is a, the higher mass of, of, the, of, of the jewel of the cast item. Great. So I would go on with uh, uh, something that I, I, I know Damiano, Damiano is hidden in his heart when we talk about uh, the added value of Pro Gold because is uh, I hope, I think that Pro Gold is also known for his technical assistance. As Damiano were, was telling you before in the introduction, once we go and, and send uh, and produce and sell uh, a master alloy, we don't just uh, give to a uh, jewelry producer uh, something to work with, but we try and want to add them, help them in the working process. So uh, it's not just uh, something, uh, uh, it's not just a goods, we're not just selling goods, but also uh, the services, the services, because once we know uh, the uh, once we know perfectly everything about our customer production, so what uh, what he wants to do, how he wants to do carotage, color, uh, production process, we try and we want to give him the best of life. But then it's not it's not ended there because, as you know, anyone can find uh, defects or problems or any kind of uh, difficulties in the jewelry making, and we are very uh, proud of to, to show people how high skilled are our technicians and how, uh, and how we, we like it and we manage to uh, help uh, jewelers solving uh, their production, production process problems. So this is really something that goes uh, over the goods, but it's a service that helps through all the phases of the of the production, I think that this uh, must be considered the, the really added value uh, in pro gold, and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's something that uh, w once I, once I met uh, or every time I met the customer, it's something that I like it because we're known for it. We're a little known for it, so. You're not just uh, the alloy seller. You're not just the alloy producer, but you're also known as a as a huge uh, help for the production process. Let's say that we provide a consultancy through the sales of a product. Yeah. And at the at the end, really, so we are really to think very well if finally the customer is choosing us not for the product that we give, but for the service that we give, because then the products, everyone is able to give. You know, sometimes a law is like an insurance. You understand if it's good insurance only when you need it, okay? When it doesn't work or when you have a problem. So then you call the insurance company and say, oh, I had a kind of car accident. They say, okay, we take care, no problem. Uh, on the other side, uh, the, the most important characteristic of an alloy is consistency. So it has to be always the same. And this gives a chance to, to the companies to be able to set up a very solid processes, production processes. And, um, and the technical assistance or how we want to call technical consultancy that we give to, to the clients, we see that um, you know, some, sometimes someone told me, the less I speak about my product to the customer and the less they call me and they ask me about the product and the more I'm able to have a fidelization of the customer because we enter in the entire production process. So we have to try to develop our knowledge and skills in how the production processes are more than 
uh, the product that we provide because at the end, you know, it's an ingredient, but the process is much more articulated, complicated and big. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, so having, uh, uh, let's say a final, a final look of the advantage of the master light, we will see uh, a quick, uh, a quick, a quick view about them. So, uh, in ProGold, as uh, as you might imagine, we have a wide variety of master alloys. So, providing uh, providing alloys for all cartridge and all, uh, almost all the colors. So, we uh, are able to satisfy our customer in uh, every kind of jewelry making they want to do. Want to do the specific composition helps properly for the production process because for uh, a different range of, uh, of color or even for the same color of a, of a law we have specific uh, elements adding as we were talking before with, with the silicon for example in order to reduce uh, criticalities and in order to make the this production process easier and higher quality result the the tests on the on the raw material on the raw material is very important for us because uh, as we were we were looking at our lab before uh, another important uh, function that it has for us is uh, to test everything everything is uh, coming into Progo. so every raw material is tested and we are not able even to touch it <laughs> even to touch it before uh, the the quality control has been made and it's been approved. After this, also uh, specifically, but not all, not only for precious metal, uh, we are very proud. Pr I think proud is the right word because uh, once we're talking about uh, ethic problem, once we're talking about uh, uh, ambiental uh, issues. Uh, it's something that uh, I am. I'm really yeah proud to to say that my my the company I work in uh, is really carrying this uh, this aspect. So uh, certification like uh, the COC and the ethical ambient certification are been have been done in ProGold, and so we are uh, showing the world that we care that we care a lot about this that are not uh, issues of every day, but these are issues of every day, but these are not things that, okay, we, we'll talk about it, but at the end, at the end we have chosen to, to make all this uh, certification showing that it's something that really means a lot for us. And uh, last one is the high, quality, uh, high qualified technical assistant we were talking about just a couple minutes ago with Damiano. Showing, uh, uh, showing these uh, categories of uh, advantages uh, in a deeper way, we'll see that this is an example of our of the variety of master alloys we have. So, uh, a completely uh, a, com a completely a choice between uh, different families master alloys for different production process for uh, different. Uh, Carotage and so on, as we were talking before. Uh, the, the tests on the on the raw material, which means really a lot for us. Uh, yesterday, I wasn't able to <laughs> to get uh, to get a, a silver a silver pack because I was still waiting for I was waiting for the quality control. I try I tried to stall them, but they immediately stopped me. Hey, show me immediately uh, that raw material, and you know. It's really uh, something that we care a lot and something that we don't work without. So uh, just the highest quality uh, raw material. The certification I was mentioning uh, before, Damiano, do you want to, to share a couple words uh, more? No, no, about, it's fine. It's this? fine. I think that um, it, it is quite important really to um, stay much more on, uh, on a, on a what, what, what the people are attending the webinar are interested, which is exactly, uh, you know, what we were talking till two, three minutes back about the 
effect of um, you know uh, composition in the alloy and and the consequent problem that they could have or they could not have all the things that Luca is talking now is exactly just to, in order to as soon as we are able to have the composition that is helping our our clients to achieve the results they are looking for then the most difficult job is to con to keep consistent that composition and these all the instrument or certification provide the you know the the, the proper environment in order to achieve achieve that kind of uh, uh, specification. Um, so I, I do not have to, to add more. I don't want that the, the, the presentation, it looks too much uh, what it is not, that is not really commercial. We are just telling in the back, of course, we are talking about us and we have to promote us because we, we know that if you give us your, uh, your your trust, we can say that you are in good hands, in, uh, mainly because really uh, everyone says that we that they have passion, but I th we think that we have a little bit more. I don't know why, but I'm sure that we have more. And 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 always I would love to live my life in the hand of the people that has passion for what they do every day. So, uh, Damiano, I think uh, this was uh, the last the slide last, of the yeah. presentation. Uh, now, if there's uh, something we can, uh, some, if there are some questions or if there are... Yeah, uh, maybe we can spend a few words about uh, case you need to receive a consultancy and help, uh, please uh, contact our, uh, our India, pro, India office, uh, where the, 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 how to say, our partner in India is Mr. Chintan Mehta. Here we have all the data. I think that most of you know him and all his staff because we have a, several uh, colleagues that are working in India in order to try to promote our business models. I mean, really, we don't want to sell a product. We want to sell solution. This is word that everyone says, but we believe very much that we work hard to be able to meet this kind of promise that we are giving to, to the people that is going to trust us. So if you have any question, we are very glad to to, okay, to can ahead. you take out the slide if you don't mind? Yeah, please. Yeah, just a second. Okay. And uh, Damiano and Luca, see, uh, I can see a lot of questions in the question answer. So if you can first start with those question answer, whatever has been. Okay. Uh, Luca, you can go. You have the. And then if you need, I help you maybe. Yeah. You want, uh, there is a. You have click on. Question and answer. There I are have it here. Out there. I have it here. So uh, let, let's see if the start. Okay. So they are, you, let's start from the first okay. one. Do you have a common alloy for uh, machining and casting process in pink and white gold? So um, I would always suggest uh, for, for example, in, in order to compare them, I always suggest uh, to have a look uh, at our uh, at our website. We have uh, a huge variety uh, of uh, alloy. Are you talking about the Genia 152, the question from Mr. Nishan? No, I started from uh, from, the, from, where? from the from the from, from down. Ah, from, from the from the last one. Do you have a common alloy for machining and casting process in yeah. picking my gold? Yes. Yeah, we have many. Uh, of course, I think that we yeah. should, uh, yeah, contact our. Uh, we have a huge mission, huge yeah, in, so. in Mumbai, yeah, because then we have to see. Usually, you know, uh, I don't know if Luca, you were talking about is is, is existing the perfect alloy. No, maybe we were not <laughs> no. talking about this, right? No. So, but it's not existing a perfect alloy. It's just existing <clears> the the best alloy for you. In um, our technical department, when you are going to 
ask, they give you several questions about which is your habit, uh, which kind of alloy you are already using, because it's, it's not to, 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 you know, to copy what you are already using, but to know which is the state of the art. So where you are and where you want to go. Why and why you want to go in a different direction. So I believe that this one, um, it, it can be the answer. So, and I, I propose that you will be contacted by our people in order to go deeply in the, in the process of understanding, um, uh, uh, process of understanding which will be the best alloy that we have in our range in order also to make a trials together. Uh, then there is a, Okay, if we go from here, uh, going up, uh, what is the composition in the traditional alloys? I think that this question, I saw that it was coming, coming when uh, uh, I was giving the example of mixing uh, the alloy with a, with, a, with, a, with a road when it is liquid, that silicon one is, has a higher viscosity and the one without silicon has different viscosity, but in case of, uh, if you compare the composition between a traditional alloy and a silicon alloy or traditional alloy and grain refined alloy, you see very small detail that is changing. So some part per million of silicon or some part per million of, 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 of grain refined. So in that case, uh, is mainly not the base composition, so how much gold, copper, zinc, silver, palladium, or whatever, but it's much more that small addition that is changing the physical, very much the physical, chemical, mechanical, and technological characteristics. Yeah, also, also the next question was about uh, the quantity of, uh, of an element, so... Uh, the rose gold, the rose gold, oh, the rose gold. Uh, you make have iridium or any platinum group metal? If yes, how much is it? The concentration of iridium yeah. or any platinum. The, you do not use platinum as grain refiner because it yeah. has a good solubility in uh, in 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 gold in gold alloy. Uh, let's say much better than iridium and other elements. And I believe that. Um, it is well understood that every grain refiner has one characteristic. They had no solubility uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the matrix. Uh, and that's why the nucleation starts from many points. Uh, there are some carriers sometimes that bring that all those elements homogeneous in the, in the entire mass. Uh, we use iridium more, we use ruthenium, we use uh, rhenium mainly. Uh, some osmium we are not using, but the most common is iridium, but recently even uh, introducing more and more ruthenium with a new technology to have a very good, uh, let's say, homogenization, which is very tough for ruthenium because of uh, it has very low solubility, even in copper, differently than iridium. So there is not really the carrier to bring ruthenium in the alloy. And there is always in, in, the, in the corner, behind the corner, there is always the problem or the possible problem like uh, hard spots. Because when you introduce grain refiner and you are not uh, able to well homogenize the grain refiner, uh, it is a potential source of hard spots together with the purity of gold, of course. And, uh, and how much simple, it starts from um, uh, 20 to 30 part per million up to three, 400 part per million. This is the range of grain refiner. Uh, but let, let me stress again that the most complicated issue is to have it homogeneous. Try to image have nothing and having homogeneous everywhere. If not, you have a cluster of that element because it's not homogeneous. It's like to put a rock inside a, a glass of water, then the rock will stay rock. Okay, I think the next one, please mention the name of the soldering so, and master no, no. In their ratio. Plain gold jewelry should be bright, mango, yellow is the Indian mindset. Okay, I think that we have to, if it's possible at the end of, uh, 
the webinar to, to give us the, the question, then we will contact the company directly because I think that it, this deserves some much more question from our side to be able to answer. Yeah, I've seen that uh, there are like a, a couple technical questions on uh, uh, from, maybe from him. So maybe from the same person, what is the ratio, yeah. ratio for soldering alloy for Indian? So, yeah, th this is uh, much more uh, I think, yeah, this is for alloy, but not in the topic of today talk. Um, we are facing some keystones problem and crack issue in 10 carat pink gold. So even this could be grain size issue. I don't know if you are using pro gold product, but then always when there is a um, um, pink gold involved, the cracking, uh, the fire cracking is always behind the corner. It's bigger in 18 carat, but also in the lower carat edge is possible. To, due to a gap of solubility and, and uh, of, of copper in gold. Uh, and then there is a so possible to advise for, for to advise. rope chain. Same thing also here, we have to, we have several alloys for rope chain, for sure. As Luca said before, rope chain or solid chain, they are very sensible for, uh, very sensible for orange peel. And then uh, in that case, uh, the alloy should be a grain refined alloy. And this will help very much to reduce that issue. Of course, to increase the mechanical properties, to increase the cold working ratio during the, before the annealing, during, during the, uh, during the semi-finished uh, wire or strip production and, and so on. So even this one needs uh, there is not only one alloy that works for rope chain. There are several, so we have to uh, uh, so Yeah. There are also some new other questions uh, asking for, uh, do you suggest uh, using alloy uh, with green refiner? Will they have more hard spots? We have already answered this one, I think. Uh, yeah. It can be, it depends. Uh, the, the one that we are producing, uh, this is really our, we have several, some patents and, and it is since the uh, day zero of ProGold, our you know innovation was to develop and to be able to produce a grain refined alloy uh, without hard spots. However, hard spot is not coming only from the alloy. It depends from the composition of the hard spots that sometimes could be uh, pollution coming from the pure gold and sometimes could be the abrasive and trapped in, in the surface of the metal. But in that case, we need a, the electronic microscope to distinguish between if, it's, it, if, if, if the hard spot is a cluster of grain refinery in the, in the alloy or pollution or, or uh, abrasive uh, inclusions. So in that case, uh, potentially, yes, is the answer. But if it, if the alloy work well, it should be not the reason or the source. Then we have uh, 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 well, from the public mentioning uh, uh, Gini one seven three. So uh, maybe already a customer we, who's facing some. Okay. Might be, might be high problems. purity increase and sometimes. So the high purity increase is normal. Oxidation is normal, it's an alloy silicon less. So the rose gold has only the prob the, the, the ability to solve that fire cracking problem that was uh, showed by Luca on the video. Uh, sometimes you have cracking. This is depending very much on uh, really how you quench the flask and how severe is your heating or assembling uh, procedure. Um, and of course, uh, the, the high purity is because when you have oxidation of uh, a rose gold, then you have copper oxide on the top. Then when you go to pickling, you just remove copper, you remove more copper from the composition. And on the top, the fineness is growing up, up to even 800, but in average is able to increase the, uh, the average of the fineness of, of in, 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 in your production. 
but I believe that uh, if sometimes you fire, you you face cracking, is exactly we have even to to to, to check if uh, uh, so if it's a fresh metal or if you were recasting or reusing the scraps. So some questions. So you should contact uh, uh, you should contact um, uh, our colleagues in town. Yeah, our colleague in Mumbai and they, or in Jaipur or in Surat. And then they will uh, will help you to uh, figure out the this issue and see if changing some of, of production procedure in order to get um, the proper result with Genia 1473, which is a grain refined alloy. It's a iridium grain refined alloy. It should not crack. So, um, if you if we want to go on with uh, some questions more, there are uh, like two or three technical questions that I. I prefer from uh, oh, the, the one after by Mr. Nagendran. Yeah, it's uh, it's always uh, it's the same. No, I didn't answer this. I second. didn't answer the second. Excuse me. Excuse me. So um, he was he was asking for the a suggestion for the for the quenching uh, eighteen carat rose gold. Uh, for what setting? Huh? Yeah. Uh, what setting is a big big. Um, there are. Bit more complicated, so there are few methods. Again, or you make a kind of uh, water on the bottom of the flask, and you you make a, a container with a, something like one centimeter water, and you put the flask in order to increase the speed to reach a temperature in where uh, then you can quench the flask without having trouble of of having stone cracking. Or you spray water, you spray water on the flask uh, in order always to increase the speed to reaching a temperature where it's safe to quench the flask. Even the, those procedures can be given to you by, um, by our colleagues in Mumbai, uh, exactly if they call you or they visit you in the factory and see what you are uh, doing which are the procedure and of course this is helped very much if you use a grain refining alloy but I suppose that you are using Genia 173 it is fine if you still have problem then you have to consider that Genia 173 is the most reddish alloy that we have in our range and sometimes it's not possible to do everything so you have to accept one color that is less not the red less red so less copper and in order to be able to have a stone in place casting, and even if you wait uh, 20 or 30 minutes, then it's not, you are not in somehow damaging so much the structure, which will be still resistant in an in a, in acceptable way. Okay. Uh, going on, we have GR. Asking maximum for the maximum permission limit, zero point two percent. As per the specification, oh, okay. British standard specification that says that two zero point zero two percent, which is two hundred parts per million of iridium, oh, is something connected to the ISO eleven four twenty six to for the fire say is a new revision of the of the standard, but then it's, it's something a bit more uh, complicated than uh, uh, there are only few alloys that are uh, more than 200 ppm, but it's not the British standard, the rule. The rule is the uh, low in every country and the, and the British standard in that case for that is the, the exactly the national version of ISO 11426. Uh, it means that if I well understood the question, um, it means that fire say with the new revision cannot be used for the alloys that contains more than 0.02% of iridium and many other elements. So I, I'm personally uh, one of the Italian expert taking part to the uh, technical committee is called the ISO 174, Jewelry and Precious Metals, where we talk about these standards and I know quite well 
the, 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 if I well understood the question, and I hope that I uh, properly got the point, even if it is not exactly perfectly clear from the question that is given. Uh, anyway, if there was uh, something that we uh, didn't understand, or if there was there were a, a further question after uh, the answer, we are surely happy to to answer it even yeah. later or privately only or, or by Chinta or by or from us. There's, there's <clears throat> no problem about this. There is another question: it Is recommended to use nine 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 gold or nine nine five? No one of the two. In, my, in our opinion, because you should use nine 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 nine, so four nine, not three nine. Three nine, had, it has one gram of, so one thousand ppm of impurities. So which are those impurities? Then you cannot really uh, expect to do not have, for example, hard spot or something else. If you are look using nine nine five, you have five thousand ppm. And I was talking before about the concentration of iridium as a grain refiner that is from 20, 30 parts per million up to two, three, 400. And here you have 5,000 when you have 995. So uh, from finance point of view, then you can adjust, you put more gold and you have uh, 22 carat or 21 or 18 without problems. But technically speaking, the impurity level is very high. If it's only copper, no problem, but you should be um, assured by who is supplying you that gold saying that there is only copper or only silver as impurity. But generally speaking, there are always platinum group metals as impurities in gold. Okay, going on. Uh, is it possible to make alloy with silicon and very finer in 18 carat red gold? Yeah, we are working on it. And uh, I think that soon it will be possible thanks to an, uh, an innovation that we are working since last year at, at ProGold. And what we were saying no one and a half years ago, maybe tomorrow we are going to say yes. Technically speaking, it was always possible. But it was not possible to, uh, uh, to guarantee no hard spots. Now there is a possibility to guarantee no hard spots. We succeeded already in 14 karat rose gold because we, uh, we even recently launched uh, an alloy called the uh, Lux 258, 258, which is uh, exactly an alloy containing silicon and grain refiner with no hard spot at all. And this is a very, depending from the uh, innovation in production that we introduced uh, starting last year. So the way you cook your cake is the way you taste, is the, how then you will be satisfied in tasting your cake. So it's really something in the back, very, very important. It's our job, our know-how, and then we hope that we are able always to try to introduce new features to our product and to make them much more, uh, how to say, efficient. Uh, the next one uh, is uh, someone facing a stone fallen in pink gold 18 carat alloy, uh, stone in place casting, how to overcome this problem. Uh, okay. be... Even the, in this case, it's really complex the answer. No, uh, uh, you should really contact our colleague in Mumbai, and then uh, we can even have a, a video call and, and discuss about the problem. But we need several questions to give to you and to uh, you know to to know to know the perimeter of your problem and understanding more to give you a proper answer. Okay, then uh, uh, kind of more technical question. How to calculate the correct temperature for 18 carat yellow, white and pink gold mechanical alloy while melting and annealing so that the metal and the alloy are mixed properly and the structure is maintained? Is there any specific formula and does it depend upon the surrounding temperature too? In general, you have to choose in, in our technical data sheet um, is exactly the number reported uh, are exactly the one that we were measuring 
using the DSC. So we were checking exactly the solid to solid transformation in order to see which is the temperature, the minimum temperature when you have the recrystallization, if we are talking about the milling, or the minimum or the temperature when the metal is passing from solid to liquid, the first liquid appearing, and then the temperature, call it uh, liquidus, when the, all the metal is transformed from solid to liquid. So these two um, uh, temperature are measured by differential thermal analysis for the melting range and differential uh, scanning calorimeter for in the case of solid to solid uh, transformation. So what we report in technical data sheet is something that uh, is already <coughs> tested from our side in order to be the, mm, the closest temperature to the, when that phenomena is happening. Of course, the mass is very important because temperature doesn't mean time, you know? And uh, if we say uh, 625 is the uh, annealing temperature, but it depends if you put 100 grams, uh, one kilo, five kilo into the furnace, then you have to wait sometimes. It's like to cook one piece of bread or 100 pieces of bread, then the times is longer. Uh, the next question is, does the grain refiner alloys are more tough and please suggest how to soften them uh, to have easier diamond or color uh, stone setting? Uh, we don't believe that uh, there is, it's a little bit more hard, but in the range of below 5%. So I really would not believe that it's so easy to have that feeling by, by the goldsmith or the stone setter. Because if we are talking about yellow gold 18 carat with grain refiner, 150 beakers without grain refiner, 145, 144. So that five, six, even 10 beakers are really negligible in terms of how you are able to, maybe you want to feel the difference. There is a difference, but can, I can, can't believe that uh, is something that during stone setting, is, is, a, is a kind of barrier. Because then if you want to soften in a, sm a small grain size alloy, then you have to make the alloy becoming with larger grain. And this is not really something that you, that you, that I will suggest because finally you get the opposite uh, results of the one that we wanted you to have in putting the grain refiner. Okay. Uh, Silicon seen as before. Uh, what's the reason for... Someone is waiting for an answer. I'm waiting for an answer. But maybe since we started, we already... Uh, okay, we answered at the end. If we didn't answer, we Maybe, answered. yeah. Because what's I... the reason for not feel for rose gold? Many reasons. Uh, I think even here... Please call our colleague in Mumbai, I think. Many. I don't want to say so simple temperature because there's no meaning. I'm sure that you are applying the proper temperature. Uh, rose gold has more, a, more possibility to get copper oxides and copper oxide are reducing the, let's say, the form filling capability of an alloy. But this could happen only in case there is systems that are not closed system oxidation during melting, and I don't, I do not believe that this is your case. So I think that you should talk with our colleagues in Mumbai. Is the green fine? Yes, it, sir. See, uh, it is. I am really, really. You know, when you do a webinar and when you, you know, explain something, I think this is. I am really very, very, very happy to see that there is so much interaction into this. And I think you can continue this throughout the night because people are, you know, of course, uh, we yes. have got you, you know, I, I was really amazed when I'm seeing that every question coming and you have such an in-depth answer, you know, I think it is, they are all lucky to have an expert like you. And I, I, I would, you know, I'm not flattering you and telling you really, so, and you are answering it to going to the depth, you know, going to the science of it. It's really, really, uh, you know, I think that this is something. So 
and it can continue. So all of you who are here, I think I, I understand that you have got Damiano. You do not uh, want him to leave, and he can go on answering. So that's good. But one thing I would like to say that, of course, you have asked, and a lot of questions have been answered. We also have a lot of questions which has come to us on email. We promise that all these yeah. questions we will jot it down, and we'll send it to Damiano. and he will be answering and we'll check it that every question has been answered and we are also sending your yes your details to him and of course they will be satisfying you i what i see damiano what was you know the type of knowledge and what i you know it really I, it is we are of course fortunate to have him we will see to our team will see that every question goes there it is answered properly and wherever damiano has told that the indian team has to be contacted we'll send it to the indian team they can also contact you we'll see that they have contacted and if still you are not satisfied you can write to us we'll you know communicate to damian so that is a you know word these will be for sure okay i agree then we go overnight to to yeah. to answer even because sometimes is really much more uh you know helpful to have a talk face to face with the person because the problem is not so you know it's like to call the doctor i feel pain okay but then you have to go to the doctor he has to visit you cannot give you just an answer and 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 very appreciate very much all these questions because it means that people were interested and and our aim was exactly to 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 you know to 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 have this kind of uh, end <laughs> uh, so with a lot of questions and I'm sure that I, we are going to to answer all question with our indian colleague we are in touch every day every second so we can really um try to add the value that you are expecting all all the people that were attending the, the way yeah really a fantastic interaction i'm really grateful for those who had the patience for <laughs> the hand of the webinar and uh, try and ask their doubt uh, even if they were uh, maybe uh, possible to consider kind of general question but it's also i like them to to ask i, I appreciate very much their uh, their need to to know their they're hungry to know more about uh, what we were talking before so uh, yeah it's a surely a pleasure for us and for our colleague chintan to answer all of them Thank okay, you, Mr. Ray. Thank you, Damiano. And uh, one thing, I after looking at this, I think we should be having a follow-up to this because Damiano, personally, I can request you that you analyze all the questions. You will yeah, exactly. Just with the general type of problems people are facing, based on that, you can do a follow-up where you can always attack those issues to explain that these are the things what you are uh, asked, and this is what scientifically this is where we are going, and this is what solution what you know Progol can give right at this moment. so this this is where we are and i will ask my colleague rajat to just uh, you know give a vote of thanks because both the you know the audience and both of you you know you are fabulous and we have a very very lively session so it will be a crime if we do not thank both of you and also the audience because audience were also fantastic the type of questions was really really enriching i think there there is a right crowd what we are having because they are asking the right kind of questions which was exciting your brain so i know that damiano and so that way uh, i would ask rajat to please uh, propose a vote of thanks thank thanks a lot sir uh, i rajat vani assistant director gjpc thank all the participants for their overwhelming response and attending the session in huge number making it a great success i specially thank mr damiano zito for providing his valuable time crux of 32 year experience mr luca for sharing and enlightening our trade members on technicalities associated with alloys i thank both of you sirs from bottom of my heart on behalf of entire gnj trade of india i thank mr sabhyasachi ray ed gjepc for moderating the session making it more interactive and intellectual thanks a lot sir for sparing time i specially thank mr dinesh nawadi our regional chairman gujarat gjepc I thank our committee members, Mr. Amit Porat and Mr. Kalpesh Vagasia, for their expert guidance. I cannot forget to mention the name of Mr. Chintan from Pro Gold India for making this session possible, and Mr. Sanket Navadi, Assistant Manager, GJPC, for all his efforts in making this a success. 
I think P I thank PMBD department for their beautiful marketing creatives and awareness on social media. And I thank all my colleagues across India for spreading awareness on this session. Once again, thanks a lot to everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thank uh, you. I would like yeah. to tell to all the audience that we will be sending a feedback form, and we will have one uh, section of question in that. You can add your question in that section, and the same question will be forwarding it to Pro Goal team for their answers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It was really Thank a pleasure. You.